In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good morning. You can thank John that we're not having the longer version of the story of Susanna, which would probably take us into tomorrow, but which is a great story. Um, we're going to have the shorter version of poor Susanna preyed upon, P-R-E-Y rather than P-R-A-Y, by two corrupt elders and rescued by Daniel. I suppose being accused of adultery or taken in adultery is the theme of both readings because the gospel is that passage in John's gospel which the scripture scholars say might well belong in Luke's actually about the woman caught in adultery and used, no sign of the man incidentally, but used to try and trap Jesus and he out outflanks them and then with great gentleness as the woman stands alone in front of him, he says, has no one condemned you? No one, master, neither do I. Go sin no more. So we begin Mass praying that we might share in the compassion of the Lord, and that we might not point the fingers or judge others or use others for our own ends. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. I fail to welcome those joining us on, online, and also little Maisie, lovely to have you with us. O oh God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that you are made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Daniel. <clears throat> Susanna was condemned to death by the whole assembly. She cried out as loud as she could, Eternal God, you know all secrets and everything before it happens. You know that you have been given false evidence against me, and now I have to die, innocent as I am of everything their malice has invented against me. The Lord heard her cry, and as she was being led away to die, he roused the Holy Spirit to residing in a young boy named Daniel, who began to shout, I am innocent of this woman's death, at which all the people turned to him and asked, What do you mean by these words? Standing in the middle of the crowd, he replied, Are you so stupid, sons of Israel? as to condemn a daughter of Israel unheard and without troubling to find out the truth? Go back to the scene of the trial. These men have given false evidence against her. All the people hurried back, and the elders said to Daniel, Come and sit with us and tell us what you mean, since God has given you the gifts that elders have. Daniel said, Keep the men well apart from each other, for I want to question them. When the men had been separated, Daniel had one of them brought to him. You've grown old in wickedness, he said, and now the sins of your earlier days have overtaken you. 
you with your unjust judgments, your condemnation of the innocent, your acquittal of guilty men. When the Lord has said you must not put the innocent and the just to death. Now then, since you saw her so clearly, tell me what tree you saw them lying under. He replied, under a mastic tree. Daniel said, true enough. Your liar recoils on your own head. The angel of God has already received your sentence from him and will slash you in half. He dismissed the man, ordered the other to be brought, and said to him, Spawn of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you. Lust has led your heart astray. This is how you have been behaving with the daughters of Israel, and they were too frightened to resist. But here is a daughter of Judah who could not stomach your wickedness. Now then, tell me, what tree you surprised them under? He replied, under a home oak. Daniel said, true enough. Your lie recoils on your own head. The angel of God is waiting with a sword to drive home and split you and destroy the pair of you. Then the whole assembly shouted, blessing God, the Savior of those who trusted him. And they turned on the two elders whom Daniel had convicted of false evidence out of their own mouths. As prescribed in the law of Moses, they sentenced them to the same punishment as they had intended to inflict on their neighbor. They put them to death. The life of an innocent woman was spared that day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. <coughs> if I should walk, should walk in, in the, the valley, valley of darkness, darkness no evil would I, would I fear. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. If I should walk, walk in the in valley, valley of, of darkness, darkness no, evil no evil would I fear. Would I fear. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. If I should walk, walk in the, the valley, valley of darkness, of darkness no evil, evil would I fear. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. If I should walk okay, in the valley of darkness, of darkness no evil, evil would I fear. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. If I should walk, walk in, the in the valley of, of darkness, darkness no, no evil, evil would, would I, fear. I fear. Glory to you, O Christ, you are the word of God. Now is the favorable time this is the day of salvation. Glory to you, O Christ. You are the word of God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At daybreak, he appeared in the temple again. And as all the people came to him, he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and Pharisees brought a woman along who had been caught committing adultery and making her stand there in full view of everybody, they said to Jesus, Master, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery, and Moses has ordered us in the law to condemn women like this to death by stoning. What have you to say? They asked him this as a test, looking for something to use against him. But Jesus bent down and started writing on the ground with his finger. 
as they persisted with their question, he looked up and said, If there's one of you who has not sinned, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Then he bent down and wrote on the ground again. When they heard this, they went away one by one, beginning with the eldest, until Jesus was left alone with the woman who remained standing there. He looked up and said, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she replied. Neither do I condemn you, said Jesus. Go away and don't sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord. Martin Hogan, who's a, I think, a Dublin diocesan priest. Earlier in this fourth gospel, Jesus had said to Nicodemus, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. In today's Gospel reading, people bring a woman caught in the very act of adultery to Jesus, expecting him to condemn her. Moses has ordered in the law to condemn women like this. What have you to say? It was a kind of trap for Jesus. If he went against Moses, he could be accused of breaking God's law. If he followed Moses, he'd lose his reputation as a friend of sinners. The best way of dealing with a trap is to sidestep it. And this is perhaps what Jesus was doing by writing on the ground with his finger in silence. He was buying time. Yet when those who brought the woman persisted with their question, he finally had to break the silence. He did so in a way that took attention away from the women and placed it on her accusers. If there's one of you who has not sinned, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Jesus was reminding the woman's accusers that they too were sinners. Jesus did just enough to get her accusers to leave her alone. When Jesus is alone with the woman, he doesn't condemn her, neither do I condemn you. But he does call her to a way of life more in keeping with God's desire for her. Go away and don't sin anymore. This gospel passage is a study in how the Lord relates to us all. He loves us as we are and never stands before us as one who condemns. In his love for us, will always call us beyond where we are towards become more fully the person God desires us to be. God desires us to grow into the person of his son, to become as loving as he is. And he keeps giving us the Holy Spirit to help us to become this person he desires us to be. This journey of becoming is one we'll all be traveling until the end of our lives. So we pray. We pray that we might never use another person in the way the elders did in the story of Susanna, or the way, in a different way, the accusers did in today's gospel. 
We pray we may always seek to support and encourage rather than criticize. Lord, in your mercy, pray for judges and lawyers and all who work in the legal system for integrity and sensitivity and kindness. Lord, in your mercy, pray for the opposing forces killing each other in Bakhmuk in the Ukraine and for all on the very extensive front line. We pray for all who live in fear, especially those afraid of domestic violence. Lord, in your mercy. Pray for Malcolm, our catechumen, Maisie's dad, and for Ruth and all our candidates who will be received and confirmed at Easter and baptized. Pray for those awaiting baptism and reception and confirmation and communion around the world. And for those supporting and forming them. Lord, in your mercy. Pray for all who were sick. Especially remember those fighting illness and disease. Pray for Kim O'Neill, for Sandy Ferguson, for Tommy Clark, for John Freeman and John Cregan, for Sam Burns, pray for Mike Noonan. We remember Lydia Reed. We pray for Agnes Clark, for Bob Kelly. We pray for all those undergoing operations and procedures this morning. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who've died. Especially we remember Sarah Alcatari, whose funeral will probably be next week. We pray for Irene McLeod. Remember David Yanarelli. Pray for Sister Rosemary. Remember Ernie Moran. Pray for Mary Glancy and for Wynne Clarkin. Remember Ron and Jimmy. Pray for Billy Turnbull and for John Newell and Nula Scott and Ray Merchant. Pray for Conan Murray and Lucy Hughes and Miles Durkin. And George Smith. Pray for Nan Donati, Daisy Sanderson, Maureen Henderson. Remember Kathy Nangle and Julie Forbes. And Sally Stone and George Larum. Pray for Mark Lee. And we pray for all who grieve. Lord, in your mercy. In silence. We offer the prayers of our own hearts. Lord, in your mercy. And we ask Mary to be close to all we love. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now. Amen. We ask our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. Become for us the bread of life. Blessed you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. Become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries we may bring before you as the fruit of bodily penance a joyful purity of heart, through Christ our Lord. After the first five weeks of Lent when we've used the first four prefaces, all week we use the first preface of the Passion of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the found of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may gather into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Leo, our Bishop, the clergy, and all who minister in your name. Remember also Alec and Anne Carruthers, and Kate and Graham Nielsen, and Alec Cranston, and Daphne and Gerald, and Anne Louise and Hugh, and all who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Jane McGuire, and Senior Ray, and Mike Knox, and Father Hennessy, and all who've died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles, St. John the Evangelist, St. Mary Magdalene, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. The Saviour's invitation, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away into the. Right. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Let us pray. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward towards you. Through Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ.